welcome on this beautiful Tuesday evening. Hope everybody's had a great week so far and and uh, just been thankful to the Lord for what he's done and and just join Jesus every day. You know, it's uh, uh, every day that we get up is a day that we can uh, be thankful. Uh, there's always people that can be in worse shape than what we are. If you're going through troubles, trials, or sickness, or whatever it may be. But uh, uh, I know the victory is when we get go be with the Lord, be absent from the body, is be present with the Lord. But as long as we're here on earth, God's got us, uh, uh, got something for us to do. And so that's what we need to be about is the Father's business. Now, today I want to look at, uh, you know, uh, best, I guess, best would be our destination. Be turning in your Bible to Amos uh, chapter 8. And uh, I'm going to read a few verses there. You know, we here in Galax and Grace and Carol, it's not no big city or anything like it. And uh, even the counties, I mean, if you take everybody that's in Grace and Carroll and, and combine them with Galax, you still don't have uh, about a fourth of the population of, say, like a city like Winston-Salem just in itself. And yet, uh, uh, we don't have the big shopping malls or shopping centers like they do in the cities and we don't have the fancy restaurants like they do. Uh, we have more or less just the, the get along basic. And, uh, and for the most part, life is uh, more simplified than what would be if you lived in the city. And, uh, uh, you know, with that said, Let's start in Amos chapter 8 um, with verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon. I will darken the earth in the clear day. Uh, uh, I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentations. And I will bring up sackcloth upon our lo all loins, baldness upon every head, and I'll make it as the morning of an only sun, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Now verse 11 and 12, uh, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not of water, or not of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word, words of God, of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro, seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. And in that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Now, with that said, of what Amos Back in 763 B.C., they had a, a total eclipse of the sun and in Asia Minor, and he used that as a demonstration or an example of what would come pass. And basically, the question would be, how long Will people ignore the word of God? How far away will people uh, move from God before this happens? And uh, we turned to the Lord in uh, September of 1990. So uh, it's been 32 years that... Uh, me and my wife and uh, son have been serving the Lord. And with that said, from around 2000, 
uh, right at the brink of 2000, 1999 going into 2000. From 2000 to present day, I don't think that I have ever witnessed. Now, I remember the Vietnam War. I wasn't in it. I was just a kid at the time. Uh, my grandfather was in the Navy during uh, uh, World War II. And, of course, I've had uh, different uh, family members to be in different parts of the service in different eras of the time. And so we've not lived through our generation had through uh, World War One, and very few has in World War Two or the Korean War. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing a, a really a lack of hunger for the Word of God. And people aren't, they have no desire for God in the way that I did when uh, I come to that point that, you know, I realized I needed a Savior. And uh, so I'm going to ask you a question. And the question is, and it's based in Exodus chapter 20, the question is, there's Ten Commandments, right? that God gave Moses, Ten Commandments. Do you know how they're broke down? Well, they're broke down into two parts. The first four parts, or the first four commandments, is our obligation to God. Uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make a, uh, unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now those is humanity obligation to God. Then the last six of the Ten Commandments relates mankind to mankind, how we treat one another. Uh, verse 5, or, or the fifth commandment, honor thy mother and father. Um, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, and thou shalt not come. And, uh, and with that said, if you look at the fifth commandment through the tenth commandment, they're in jeopardy. I mean, the morality of humanity is uh, going south fast. I mean, it is just bottoms dropping out. And one of the things is, is it seems that when people are prospering, they also tend to forget God. They get wrapped up in doing their own things. Uh, and God ends up taking the back seat. And, and if he gets any leftovers, that's far and few between. You know, as long as everything's fine, there's no need for God. Now, that's the way people look at it. But you let something, uh, a very critical moment or a very crucial moment in a person's life, uh, say sickness has hit and it's uh, it can be very devastating and you find people oh be praying for me or uh, I'm praying I'm asking God this and that and there but it what was it just a, before you found out what were you doing out partying drinking doing whatever you wanted to do with not a care in the world about God till something tragic or something major gets your attention. And when it grabs your attention, you get real religious real quick like. Now I didn't say you get real godly, you get religious. 
because if you're godly, you're going to be walking with the Lord every day. Uh, you know, and, and I've often said this, it's when people make God's grace become greasy grace. Anything goes and God's going to accept it. He'll just overlook it. Well, just as God warned them back there in uh, Amos chapter 8, he said, there'll come a day you'll be wanting to hear the word of God. And uh, uh, let me read a verse before we go into another verse. But while you're there in Amos chapter 8, go to chapter 9 and look here what says, fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, verse 10, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Well, when you break that down, you'll find that God was saying, if we put it in our terminology of American language, he's saying the sinners are going to pay a price. The righteous, and what is righteous? Righteous is in right standing with God. In other words, you're doing what God's requiring you to do. Obey the Ten Commandments. That's our obligation. We're doing what God calls us to. He said, they won't hit, they won't go through. He said, I'll keep them. I'll keep them safe. Um, I want you to go to, um, I'm going to read verse out of Ephesians chapter 4. And verse 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, I think that if we was to get right down to it, and if we were to uh, look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in ministries, we'd find that, you know, as myself, I don't have to have a, a million dollar sports car to ride around in. I don't have to have a $30 million home. I don't. Uh, I don't have to beg for people to give to me. Bless me, my three, and we'll pray that God will give you more. Don't do that. Uh, I think we find that there is people, as a matter of fact, if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says in verse 1, we'll read verse 1 through 5, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. We're dangerous times. We lived in dangerous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, uh, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Uh, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, 
uh, if you notice, you can pretty well, you probably know people and they may be part of your family that you could go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, check, 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 right on down through all of it. And the, the thing is, are they seeking to do the things of God or are they seeking things to please them? And that is the problem, is that more often than not, they're seeking things to please them. You know, we got to realize that God's word doesn't change. It's going to be the same. I don't care if it's 2022 or, or 2,222. It's still going to be the same word. Men, humanity, will try and pervert it, twist it. Why? Because that's what Satan does. He tries to pervert the word of God so that people will be deceived and he's done a good job of that. It doesn't matter how much society changes the Word of God. The Word of God's forever settled in heaven and in earth, whether anybody likes it or not. And, uh, you know, it's bad when we have people just because they're famous. A ball player, movie star, and they use their platform to promote ungodliness. They prom and Now, some use it to do the right things, but there's a lot of them that you see not using it the right way. Uh, they will talk a talk, and it's deceptive. Sort of like the Pied Piper. You know, uh, and that's the problem. They're deceiving people. They're trying to make wrong be right, and right be wrong, which is destroying the very moral fabric of our nation into cheap trash. Uh, you know, look in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Huh. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. In other words, as Paul was writing Timothy, he was telling them, so listen, there'll be a time. Well, we're seeing that time. We're living in that time. It's sort of like abortion. Now, up to just a few years ago, if well, even, let's say even now, and I know this is a very touchy subject with a lot of people, but why is, a, if a person wants to have an abortion, it's okay if that person has gives birth to the baby, which are trying to change some of this now, and that baby is killed, then it's murder. Or why is it that if a woman carrying that is pregnant is shot and killed and her and the unborn child dies, it's a double homicide. Yet, if that woman wants to, they can have an abortion, and that's fine. Now, that is 
twisted or perverted thinking because that child unless something something tragic is happening that child would that has the opportunity to live should be given that opportunity um you know a doctor can baby abort a baby and it's fine yet is it right or wrong you know how is it that god said he created male and female he created man woman for man and that is the way marriage is between a man and a woman yet now they're trying to justify same-sex marriage god's word hasn't changed that's why when the writers of our constitution formed our Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, they based it not on the first four, but on the last six Ten Commandments of how we should treat one another. It's up to you to decide it if you're going to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and do whatever he wants to do. It's up to you to decide whom your God is. I know mine's Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And I know if I've got one, I've got all three. I got the Trinity. And I know that that Jesus rose from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, making intercessions for me as well as you, if you believe that, and believe in the word of, God, word of God. And see, as our nation was founded on the six, last six Ten Commandments, we're seeing it being destroyed. And what is Christians doing? Are they doing anything? Are they praying? Are they seeking God? The Bible is loaded with history of things that happened over and over. And as the saying goes, history will repeat itself. And we're seeing that right now. We're seeing it here in America. We're seeing it in other foreign countries. And, uh, and one thing about it, God will take a nation down. He will humble a nation to get them to the point that they'll either turn back to him or they'll be just a third world country. Now, typically, everything, there, there's a cycle just about to everything in life. Uh, from weather uh, to generation and there is a, a four to five year or four to five generation cycle and let me give them real quick like and I'll try not to be too long when the first generation is the ones that will go in to battle for God and fight the good fight of faith in other words they they make the way for us to have a good godly life the second generation reaps the rewards of the first and for the most part they're very appreciated of it they're thankful that they didn't have to do all the fighting and all the the pain and to get the gain and all that but then you, when you get to the third generation they start losing respect for what the first generation has done and by the time you get to the fourth 
and fifth generation, they have forgotten the battles of their ancestors and failed to appreciate anything that was fought for. Now, can we get an amen about that? You know, how many can you talk to right now? And if you say, what happened on September 11, 2001? What would some of them say? Well, I wasn't even born then. You take, that's been 21 year ago. 21 year ago since the 9-11 attack on America, which shook America up pretty good. Didn't change my whole lot. And, um, and like I said, you know, uh, it's after this gener that, that generation, the ones that's not appreciative, that will either turn to God or be destroyed. And I know that Amos is talking about the rise and fall of Israel, but can't not also uh, talk about us too. I mean, I know that that's Old Testament. This is New Testament. And yet, we see nation after nation, and the Lord says, you know, the nation that seeks after him will be blessed, and the nation that don't be cursed. And, and that's just like, if we don't bless Israel, then we're going to be cursed just for that. But... And I insert button, that means hold on for what I just said, or let me put yet. As we read back there in Amos chapter 9, verse 9, where God said he would seethe, in other words, he would shake, and what would fall through would be the sinners. They'd be the ones destroyed, but the righteous, those that are in right stand with God, they see all the chaos going on, and they're going to be protected. Uh, that's why, in other words, the righteous will remain, and the ones that aren't won't be. I will close out with First John chapter three, and uh, in First John chapter three, verse twenty-two through 24. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because, you need to highlight this, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, that right there, we preach on that for a while. What sir we ask to receive from him? Why? Because you're obeying the commandments. You're keeping you're you're keeping the first four, you're keeping God focused in your life, and the last six you're doing, you're treating people the way that God wants you to treat them. You're doing things the right way. And Jesus and the word of God says, Hey, you ask what sir you ask, Father, in my name, so shall it be done unto you. John's just uh, given a, a repeat of it. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Not what you want to do, but what God wants you to do. Verse 23, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. There you go. Like I said, the last six commandments out of the ten relates mankind to mankind, how we treat one another. And then verse 24, And he that keepeth his commandments, plural, dwelleth in him, and he in him, Hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. You see, that's the one thing that I can say, is that the day that I received the Lord Jesus, 
when I accepted what he did on the cross for me at Calvary, when I come to the point that I realize I was a sinner headed to hell and I needed a Savior. And I asked God to forgive me. I asked the Lord Jesus to forgive me. And he did. I didn't have to beg him to forgive me. He forgave me. And when I asked him, Lord, to fill me with his spirit, so that I can serve him, he filled me with his spirit. And from that day on, have I been perfect? No, I, I have my mistakes every once in a while. They pop up and I have to ask God forgive me and help me to uh, put that old man back down under because I'm supposed to be a new creature with a new feature and a new future. And and keep focused on God. Enjoy life. Be a witness for the Lord. Seek after Him. Hunger after the Word. Get in the Word. Listen to the Word over and over. And that's one thing about it. With the technology of this day and time, when we first turned the Lord, they wasn't Hardly anybody had cell phones or anything like that back in 1990. And yet now, about everybody's got one. And you can, a matter of a few seconds, you can listen to any type of gospel music you want to listen to. You can listen to any type of ministering you want to listen to. You can have the Bible read to you while you working with your cell phone. I mean, we have unlimited access. And of course, the greatest unlimited access is the Spirit of God inside of us so that He can teach us. We read that last week. You remember when we was in St. John how the comforter would come and teach you of things to come and bring to remembrance things. You got to put it in for him to call it to remembrance. So what do you think about where, how America is? And you know what? We might not be able to change all of America, but we can change one soul at a time. And it begins with me and you. How we treat people, how we put God in front of us and serve him. The first four commandments is our obligation to God. The last six commandments is our obligation of, of God's given us to be towards each other. And when we do that, we'll find that life is so much better. It'll be so much sweeter, so much more pleasant. And if all of America could ever come to that understanding, it would be untold of what God could and would do through Americans. I'm not in one of the foreign countries, but I am here. And as, as Jesus said when he gave the disciples, he said, go out into all the world. Your world may not be, but your community. You may never go out of of Grace and Carroll or Wiff County. Wherever your world is, witness from Lord Jesus Christ and treat people the way that God wants them to be treated. So I hope this a little bit enlightening and uh, especially about the Ten Commandments because 
most people don't realize that it is broken down into two parts. With that said, as always, I give this opportunity that if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus or if you've backslid on God, let's get back in right standing with God. Let's get started with God, started with Jesus Christ, so that your life will be headed in the right direction. So let's just pray this simple prayer. If you'll believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names in heaven and earth. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Give me all my trespasses, all my faults and all my failures. And Lord, I know according to your word, it's done. So now, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this moment on, I can serve you. Help me to live for you and to do what is right. And I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed it, that prayer, you meant it, you'll start reading the Word of God and it will take a different aspect in your life. It'll take new meaning in your life. We invite you to come be with us Sunday morning, 11 10 here at Mountain Harvest Church and I look forward to being with you tomorrow evening uh, same place here in my office at uh, 6 30 pray and hope that everybody has a great night get a good night's rest wake up refresh and be a witness be that light in a dark dying world and share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ God bless you. See you tomorrow evening and have a wonderful rest of the evening.